Good morning, my friends. I'm Clover. I am mostly over the crud that I was suffering from three days ago, the last time I solved a puzzle with you guys. Thank you so much for all of the get well wishes in the comments. I appreciate you all. Today we're going to be solving a classic Sudoku by Philip Newman called Sequence Break. This was originally posted on February 28th, 2024. And we just have classic Sudoku rules and nothing else here. So we need to place the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. So classic Sudoku logic comes in two flavors. I talked about this a little bit in my recent cursed variants video, and I'm going to talk about it briefly again here. We have hidden digits where you have a digit that can only appear in one possible place in a row, a column, or a region. For instance, these two ones, tell us that one can't go in these cells, so we have a hidden one in this region, because this is the only position, the only kind of quote-unquote hiding place for one in this region. The inverse of this is naked logic, where you have a cell where there's only one digit that can possibly go in it, because every other option has been removed. If you look up here, for instance, this is a naked digit. The way we see that is we already have three, four, five, seven, and eight in the region, so this cell can't be any of those. It must be 1, 2, 6, or 9, but we already have a 1 and a 6 in the row and a 9 in the column, so that's going to be a 2. And from there, because this is a well-crafted, handmade classic Sudoku, we're going to kind of often have the option to use either of those, and we're going to end up bouncing back and forth and kind of using a balance of both of them as they present themselves. So the first place I'm going to look is these nearly full regions. I have four regions that are more full than empty right now, so I'm going to focus there first. I find region logic generally to be easier to see than row and column logic, so I tend to focus on that first. And here I see immediately that I have a 6 here and a 6 here, and that gives me a hidden 6 in the region. And then I still need to place a 1 and 9 in the region, but I have a 1 right here, so I'm going to put my 9 there and my 1 there. Now let's take a look down here. I have the five low digits, and I know I've talked about this on this channel before. Often if you see in a handmade classic, just low digits or just high digits, that is the setter signaling to you, hey, there's something going on here. It's meant to kind of draw your attention. Here we know we need a six, seven, eight, and nine in this region. I have a six here, and I have a six here, so the only position for six is there. I can't quite place seven, eight, and nine yet, but I'm gonna pencil mark those because I will resolve them later. Down here, I need an 8, and 8 can't go in any of these cells, so let's place an 8 here. And then the other digits I'm going to need are 2, 7, and 9, and again, I can't quite resolve those yet, but I'll get to them pretty shortly, so I'm going to hang on to that for now. In this region, the last of my regions that kind of started out quite restricted, I have a 3 here and a 3 here, which give me a hidden 3 in the region. These are now going to be 1, 2, and 9. And once again, this puzzle is starting to kind of develop a logical theme. I can't resolve the last three digits, but there's kind of this concordance. I can see that there are a lot of shared digits here, so I'm getting the sense that these, once they start to resolve, are just going to resolve all at once in a big flood of digits, and it's probably going to be a lot of fun to fill those in. So now I'm going to start looking for naked and or hidden digits elsewhere in the grid. And the first thing that just happens to jump out at me is I have three fours in all three of these regions, and I also have a four up here. And that's going to restrict where I can place fours elsewhere. So I can't place four in these cells. This four also takes four out of this cell. So I'm going to put a four here. And now that I have these two fours, I have these two fours. That is going to force me to put a four here. That is a hidden four in region nine. Same thing going on up here. So these two fours tell me that four has to go in one of those cells. This four tells me exactly where it goes. Now I have these two fours and I have this four, which places my last four in the grid. And I've actually placed all of the fours now. Now I'm looking for other pairs of digits that are near each other that might see most of the cells in a certain region. And the next thing I've focused on is these two sixes. So I see these sixes restrict six from these cells, then this six removes six from this cell. So that's going to be a 6. And now I have these two 6s, which tell me 6 can't go in these cells. And then I have these two 6s, so I get another hidden 6. And now, um, if you have 8 of a certain digit, you can always place the ninth one. So it's always worth your while if you just notice that you've placed 8 of a certain digit. Just quickly go check where the last one is going to go. That's a good way to be efficient. 
Now, while I was down here in this region, I also noticed that I have two fives looking at this region that see the, almost the whole thing. So five will have to go there. Is there anything else that's seeing most of that region? I don't see anything, but because there are relatively few open cells here, I'm going to pencil mark these just to make sure there isn't anything that I've missed. So I still need one, two, three, and nine in this region. So if I mark these, one, two, three, and nine, and this is genuinely something I sometimes do, just solving on a computer, just start out fully marking and then remove digits that are seen. I removed two and nine here, showing me that there's a one and three in these cells. And then this three resolves which way around that's going to go. And then, of course, I only have one more digit left to place in the column, so I'll place that there and remove my seven pencil mark. Is there something comparable I can do up here? Perhaps. So I have one, two, three, four, six, and nine. I still need five, seven, and eight here, and I have a five and seven in this column, so this is going to be a naked eight. And then these two cells are going to contain five and seven. I don't know the order yet, but I will get there. Now let's look at this column and maybe this column, because these are looking like they're starting to fill up. And the first thing that jumps out to me about this column is that I have a nine here, which sees these two cells. So the only position for nine in the column is there. Right here, I still need a two and an eight. Can't resolve those yet, but I'll leave them for later. Here I need a two, seven, and nine to finish this row, and the two keeps me from putting two in those cells, so there's my two. And then this is going to be a seven, nine pair. Now this is kind of interesting. I could see this in two ways. I happen to be seeing it right now as a 7-9 pair, which gives me only one remaining digit in the column. Alternatively, you could just as easily ask yourself, where does 3 go in this column? And pretty much right off the bat, it could only go here. So I could have gotten that from the very beginning, but I spotted it later through the medium of this pair. That pair is also going to give me a 5 here and a 7 here. And I get an 8 here as my last digit, and I can remove 8 there. Now let's clean up a little bit down at the bottom now that I've filled so much in. So this 1 sees this, which makes it a 9, a 2, and a 1. I have a 2 here, which sees this, and places a 2 there. And I can't quite resolve all of this yet, but I can tell that when I get that, that's going to cascade. Here I still need a 1 and a 3 in the column. They'll go like that. I need a 5 and a 9 in this region. They'll go like that. I need a 1 and a 7 to finish off this column, and I can't resolve those yet, I don't believe, but I should be able to momentarily. Now I need a 2, 8, and 9 to finish the region. So that can't be a 2. That can't be a 9, and I'm noticing a 2, 8 pair here, which tells me this is a 7, a 9, and a 7, and that, sure enough, is giving me that lovely cascade effect of filling in a whole bunch of digits in this part of the grid, and I think that's going to carry us all the way through the grand finale of this puzzle, which is a 3 and a 5. There we go. That is how you solve Philip Newman's sequence break. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're having an awesome day, and I will see you in a couple days.